I'm out. We are live. Kaboom. I'm with Dr. Sanchez. We're hanging out. Dr. Marco Sanchez, Gilroy High School. Um, we're just hanging out. Wanted to talk to him, ask him a few questions, see how he's doing, learn a little more about Gilroy High School. Let me pop these notes up. And uh, what can I say about this gentleman? Tell us a little bit about yourself, Dr. Sanchez, for those who don't know, a.k.a. Superman. <laughs> well... First of all, thank you for the opportunity to interview, Roman. I, I have a lot of uh, uh, admiration for people that are in your business as realtors, and uh, I've had an opportunity to to talk on on these tours they do where they have uh, you know, several dozen realtors and tell them about Gilroy High School and how it's changed and how it's uh, evolved over the years. Thank you and so much. The smell of garlic in the air. <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great It's a great bedroom community to the Silicon Valley, as they say, say uh, very affordable compared to areas of San Jose. So I just want to put that plug in there. Lots of new builds south of our of the property of, 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 the, of campus. Mm-hmm. And so our enrollment's growing. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good school. Let's, let's, talk about, let's, let's talk about what we were talking about right when we walked in with the, the remodels going on. You were telling me, we've got the first two-story. Well, there's a $15 million facelift. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It's that, um, Gilroy received uh, a few years ago, and right. the campus has been completely redone. It was a public, uh, it was an extreme makeover public school edition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they essentially just they gave it a facelift, and it looks great. It's marvelous. Uh, there's a, a, a parking lot project which is planned for the summer, which is uh, going to completely redo the student parking lot, re- repave, resurface, and then solar panels covers. Uh, seven rows of solar panel covers uh, parking, and uh, so we're excited about that. And then also a two-story, 20-classroom math building awesome. that will replace the portable in the back part. Of the I hate math. That's so nice. <laughs> yes. So the solar panels, how, how does that work? I've always uh, wondered that as well. So essentially, the goal is that they will one day... Uh, run everything as far as the electricity and pay themselves off. They'll pay for themselves essentially over okay. time. Okay. Over time with the with the uh, the, uh, the, the, the it, it will generate funds over time and pay for stuff. Over time. Right, right, and, and return that. Idea. And uh, uh, yeah, totally random question, but I was just curious to see all the Eastside United School districts are starting to do that. Yes, they're kind of San Jose Unified, Clovis Unified. I mean, it's it's really the, the way to go. In terms and, of, and they're using the parking lot structure for those who can't and kind of just. Creating a hanger, creating a cover, and, yes. and doing that yes. uh, over. Uh, and just in case you guys don't know, we're in the presence of a of an Olympian, uh, one hell of an athlete. Well, first off, both Eastside San Jose products. <laughs> let me say, and I was bragging to to coach that you know I went to Pala, toughest <laughs> neighborhood. I went to Lindell Elementary, yep. uh, and then he goes really. I went to Shepherd, and that's when I said. Okay, you got me there. Probably the only town I could think of of a tougher area. And, and I was reading up last night, and one thing that kind of hit my my heart was um, kind of talking more about uh, your coach. And I think that's one of the big things we don't realize is how how big of an influence you know coaches and those little people have um, in our lives. And, and yeah. I heard you say you know you were getting into fights. He dragged you by the ear and, and kind of brought you in. And I have, I have a similar story when I transitioned from wrestling to basketball. And to this day, I keep in touch with him with that fact. And I still don't think he understands what kind of... <laughs> and that's the thing. If you can ask everybody in the audience, is, you know, name me one teacher that made had the biggest impact mm-hmm. in your life. And you'll know yeah. right off yeah. the bat. Yeah. And then I, if I say, tell me about all the other teachers, mm-hmm. name them. Mm-hmm. And we'll have no idea. So tell, tell me about this, this gentleman. Yeah, coach Ashmore was my middle school coach, and he's a, he's a, he's an awesome uh, man, amazing. Uh, I, I got inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, California Wrestling Hall of Fame, and he was one of the presenters that was, that was part of the program. So he, he's great. Uh, he, he did intervene at a very crucial time in my life where I was going nowhere fast mm-hmm. and uh, got me plugged into the sport of wrestling. And uh, thanks to him and wonderful teammates and Grace of God, really, uh, I was able to change course and, and get in a positive direction and, and put my energies into more productive uh, um, endeavors. And so, um, and Coach Barajas was also an amazing uh, influence. He was at Independence High School uh, after I left 
Shepherd, of course, he graduated. Oh, the brother went there. It's supposed to be a junior college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turned huge into that. campus, huge campus, and uh, and then Keep I, going okay, I'm also under the shot still. And, Sorry, then, <laughs> and then also uh, sure Coach, Coach Shade, also who is an amazing yeah. uh, influence in my life, and, and just and then Coach Douglas at the, at the uh, Arizona State University. So I've been very fortunate, very blessed to have some really key people in my life to help me, and then some great teachers also, very supportive mm-hmm. community. And, people that wanted to see me succeed so right right and then Shepard man uh, and that that was uh, pretty amazing for you the coach how did he convince you to stay uh, to, to wrestle because obviously there's a lot of distractions a lot of reasons you talk about how you got bit by the wrestling bug yeah uh, bug and you told those kids before you left because we were, we were the same way all full of ego right yeah. at first and yeah. I'm going to show all, all of you guys and I remember when I transitioned from Pallet to Quimby we barely just went, you know, a few mm-hmm. blocks, a few feet, and it was a completely different world, oh, a yeah. different transition. Yes. I think about the times of, you know, my walks home from Palo, the kind of trouble that I could get into. Um, obviously, uh, your your mom and, and dad were very supportive. Were they in the picture? Yes. Well, my, my, well, my mom people? my mom was uh, very supportive. Uh, my dad also, but more so my mom. And mm-hmm. She uh, so mom got behind me, and she ended up passing away when I, when I was in eighth grade, so that was a very... Uh, you know, I dedicated that season to her, and I went undefeated that year after wow. having a losing record the previous year. So that you know, mom was was inspirational and motivational in that regard. Right. She never missed a match, you know, and so when she wasn't there. I, I just wrestled on, in, on her behalf and in her honor and in her memory. Uh, but yeah, just being in, in Shepherd Middle School, East San Jose in itself, just getting to school. Sometimes you had to go through several neighborhoods. You would end up. You know, sometimes running away from people that were yes. trying to get you and, yes. and or after you. And James Lake for me. Yep. Okay, there you go. There. Here you go. So it's it's so uh, that, that must have really lit a fire in you as far as dealing with the grief uh, of that. Would it you did. Say wrestling it did. was the outlet. You know, it was. I, I it was. I don't mean to get very personal, but in my mind, I can only imagine that if you didn't have that outlet, that even more could have sent you the other way. Oh yeah. You know? Oh definitely. How, how therapeutic is that to? Um, be able, be able to do that, and that kind of transitions me into. I can never explain to people the off the, the mat principles, and uh, I almost want to write a book because it's in our mind. We don't know how to explain it of everything other than the actual wrestling that really creates that discipline um, in your life. Kind of a really tough question, but like if you had to sum sum it up, say you're pitching this to a dad on why his his, <laughs> son, his son should wrestle. What are some of the? I mean, number one, I think work ethic. Right, it's the hardest. It's the hardest sport in high school athletics, without a doubt. Period. And I sit on the on the CIF uh, Federated Council and the Executive Committee, so I see sports from you know the thirty thousand feet level. Mm. And I, as a principal and as a as a volunteer as a, uh, assistant coach, I see it at the at site level. So I can just tell you, without a doubt, that it is truly the hardest thing you will do in high school athletics. And in, in college, it's it, it gets even tougher. It's, it's a grueling sport, so it t- far more mentally than physically. Would you say both? Would you agree? Both, because okay. it's, it's the only sport that has a weight requirement. Right. So you have that aspect of the sport, and then you have a grueling training. If you want to be the best, you're going to have to be tremendously motivated, have a tremendous drive, and have some, some high goals, and be realistic about what it's going to take to get you there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I loved. And some people are great at individual sports versus team sports. Team sports are, are important, but as far as life, at the end of the day, you know, you can only control what you can. And I feel wrestling had those aspects. And for me, I transitioned from second grade to wrestling forever when I was 16. And, and that was huge for me because... And you played basketball. Yes, too, right? yes. And my dad laughed me in my face. <laughs> he wanted me to wrestle. But the one thing I think that really got me to leap and bound was all the work ethic I had from second grade to sophomore year from wrestling and kind of applying that. And, and they're the same season, so... And, and exactly. Yeah. And thinking, no, well, really, I was growing like crazy and thinking like Dennis Rodman that, okay, I'm horrible. <laughs> but you're not gonna outwork me, and I don't mind bumping elbows, yep. physical uh, contact uh, down down there. And a lot of times that's enough, getting garbage points, getting rebounds, and so forth. So um, that that is, uh, I think that is epic. Just a tr- just a transition because everybody talks to you about wrestling. That's all they talk mm-hmm. to you about. Let's talk about. So you're you're back from ASU. Your uh, security. Uh, Guard detail, some type. Of oh, I, I, okay. So transitioning into my in my into my career. Because then we ask about wrestling. I want to talk about leadership. Right? Yeah, at Arizona State University, leadership. ASU, great great wrestling program, national champions, uh, nationally national ranked for champions. several years. Okay. Uh, 
Coach Douglas was the 1988 Olympic coach, so uh, he himself was a two-time Olympian. Uh, it was it was a great place to be, and I thrived in that environment. Was able to to be an All-American, be a national champion, and train in the Sunkist Kids, which is a club part of it uh, of, the, of the program, and it supported you know, athletes that had Olympic aspirations. And so year-round stuff, year summer round, wrestling, year round, and that's traveling. The, that's the key, I feel. Going Any to sport, Europe, going round. to going around the world, Europe, Asia, what have you, and just wow. going to, up against the best. And uh, so that, it was an, it was an ideal environment for me. But you know, just like any athletes need an exit strategy from the sport. Okay, so it, I, I wasn't ready to, to finish wrestling or done with wrestling at that point in in '93 uh, when I graduated from Arizona State. So I didn't want to. And my goal was to, to make '96 games, and so I needed to, of course, earn a living as well, and then get in a training environment that would support my goals. And so I was able to do that. I did start as a, as a as a security guard at a. You gotta, high start, school. you gotta start somewhere. Uh, People hate that. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be a security guard. So you rather stayed home, exactly. right? Uh, you exactly. gotta. Start. I didn't mean to cut you. No, no, you're right. No, yeah. you, you gotta start somewhere. It was, you know, I I worked in the fast food industry. I, I had mm-hmm. jobs at, you know, at little, little Caesars Pizza. I mean, I know what it's like mm-hmm. to work and serve, and, and mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not. That's not beneath me. Mm-hmm. You know, when I get out of my car to come to this office, if I see a piece of garbage, I'm picking it up. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, I, and I'm gonna lead by example. Mm-hmm. So. Being a, a, a security guard and then working my way through my teaching credential, because mm-hmm. I, I did have a degree, which is important. Yes. Like I said, you got to have an exit strategy. So when you, when you leave the university, it's important for athletes to get that degree. 100%. And a lot of times, a lot of athletes, in certain cases, they don't get degrees. Which so usually a lot of them have no choice but to get into mixed martial arts because they didn't have an exit plan. Or money, it could be other things. That sure. There are many sure. uh, you know, mixed martial arts with. Uh, There's a lot of opportunities lot of that didn't exist back then that, that, are, that exist today. And the MMA is, of course, one of them. 100%, 100%. And it's so funny that, so you go to get um, your associates at University of Phoenix, and it's funny how some of those people, then they just catapult into getting their PhD. Yeah. Well, that probably wasn't even on their mind. Like, where, where did that kind of, you were like, oh, just keep going. Just keep going. Well, you know, as I started I started teaching, and uh, teaching led to uh, being the dean of students, dean of students and activities director at the, at the junior high, mm-hmm. and then eventually to a vice principalship, and then ultimately principalship. And each one of those required more experience, uh, more formal uh, training and education. And so I just kept going. And then actually the United States Olympic Committee had a uh, scholarship program also, so they paid for part of the master's degree. I joined the military reserves. I was in the Navy for, for three years uh, as a CB and uh, in serving our country, which is a tremendous honor. And so that also uh, gave me some assistance to, to pursue my master's, finish my master's degree in Going to my doctoral program, all while still competing, mm-hmm. still, you know, uh, helping run a school, right? And and, and, and staying debt, at a high staying level. debt free <laughs> as much as possible. Yes, as it did much, help. Yeah, yeah. It did help tremendously. Because there, there is that there, but you know, you got to think about our kids today. Realistically, I, I mean, I think it's a little bit to do with our system yes. as well. But you can't put them in the right starting place by having them have something over their head right away. Um, and, and I think that that's. Uh, Unfortunately, depending on what you want to do, if you want to be a businessman, I wouldn't say that. Uh, it, I think education is, is top. It's number one, and uh, it's the most important thing. But as far as business, it depends on what your outcome is, realistically, what you want to do. But um, education at the most basic level and bachelor's level, I think, is uh, essential for anybody. Um, and tuition costs are, are sky, have skyrocketed through the roof. I, it, some of our former graduates, and if you look to the wall here, make sure if you look this way, you yeah. can see the from the class of 2010, my first graduating class here, to the class of 2017 that just uh, recently... Talk about love. Yeah. So... That's Price's memory. There's a, there's a lot of uh, great students that came out of Gilroy High, and, you know, a lot of them have incurred quite a bit of debt. That's Going awesome. out to... The sketch. That was a, a student that drew that, drew that uh, for me. Uh, but, yeah, there's a lot of students that come out of debt with, I mean, six-figure debt, which yes. is pretty... I, I just can't imagine that. I was very fortunate. I do have a student loan, but they're not anything close. You know, I had three degrees and oh, less than twenty thousand. I mean, from three degrees, that's pretty good, you know. So the kids are coming out hundred plus, hundred thousand mm-hmm. plus. You know, it's it's very pricey. And they don't read the fine print. They don't be worse than credit card APR sometimes with these graduate school uh, yes. loans. Yes. And my sister is a doctor now, but uh, you know she's looking back and she's like. Well, cost of close to $300,000 uh, 
I'm dead in so many years of, of my life wow. gone, right? It's um, a mortgage. From that, yeah, absolutely. And, and there's obviously many pros. It's your dream. Is that's what you want to do? Is support a role, but there's got to be a, a, a better way. And that's why I think we're starting to see a little more of you know the burden movement and so forth. I think it was New York. Who, if if you're actually a resident of New York, right? The situation be free. I think. That's a great move, and it's an incentive for them that obviously sure. you can't be out of state. You have to be sure. from um, New York. But let's talk about uh, education, Dr. Sanchez. We, we, know, we know your stud. We know everything that you do. <laughs> we don't check his resume. Uh, but what really sparked that for you? One quote I love to say is, education is the key to change of perception in anything. Um, and I always thought it was MLK, but the more I look it up, I, just, I can't find it. He probably said it a lot. Sure. It. But what what really sparked that for you? Was it the kind of transition of the way things worked out, or did you know you always, I just want to be around people, man? I well, just I, I just the, people, the influencers the influencers in my life that I mentioned earlier, the mm-hmm. coaches, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of coaches are educators. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, a lot of the teachers that I came in contact with that showed a, an interest in me and, and saw something in me that I didn't see at the time, mm-hmm. uh, they were all educators. And right. so I always wanted to be like that. I thought that that was a noble way to give back to your community, give back to the next generation and the next generation. You know, just just to your right there is a principal, a picture of my high school principal that came out to, he's retired now, uh, Mr. Chamorro, who, who uh, just came out to visit. And Independence. Drank, from Independence, correct. And then Overfeld later on. Still an influence in my life. And then I, you know, so we still have, we're still in touch. A lot of the people that I mentioned earlier, I'm still in touch with them. They are influential people and made a big difference in my life and the kids that you sh- that you showed in the pictures here they come back and visit and it's always nice to hear that, that you know in some small way i had a chance to be a part of their their success and so and i just continue to in their life to, to support them uh, that, 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 that's got to be the, the greatest karma right the greatest yeah way paid yeah. forward uh, yep. you know, for those uh, who, who believe in that or whatever you believe in i feel like you have to that's the epitome of uh, selfless service to educate people and that's, uh, that's amazing I had a uh, coach like that as well he's the one that point, <laughs> pointed me out when I was at 6'2 Dennis Fernandez he came uh-huh. out of retirement to coach at, at Evergreen uh-huh. and he just said you come over here and for, he's a very soft spoken guy right. as well but the impact that he's had to this day I mean I put together the first alumni game and kind of uh, honored him I mean so many nice. so many years at San Jose High wow. um, and he took Andrew Hill to the final wow. four and um, to this day we we'll still keep in touch with them writing a book on, on you know, his experiences in the Vietnam War, and uh, he kind of gave back, he created the Sons of San Jose, if you look right next to the Shark Tank, you'll see Sons of San Jose, the memorial, so him and his uh, wife put that together, just kind of listening out kids, and at that time, they were obviously just kids, kids. right, in yeah. San Jose, I mean, yeah. draft Teens. going on, yeah. the kind of uh, impact he had on my life, and to still have that unconditional person I can call uh, about whatever, you know, moves going on, what, sure. do, you, what do you think, sure. and I know sure. he's going to give it to me straight yeah. Yeah. and uh, that's a, nice. a really really beautiful thing um, no stress we can always upload this later and it's great look at this you got so many people <laughs> anticipating it uh, that's and that's only going to make them want to see this more <laughs> when I finally uh, put, uh, put it up um, let, let's keep strolling through let's see how we're doing sure I try, I try my, my whole goal is forget about what we think focus on the audience focus on those kids, I know some su- subway drive through employees are going to try to sneak in here and have their uh, opinions, and that's why I kind of put together these kind of creative ones uh, last night that probably nobody has uh, talked to you about. Let's let's start. Let's start with one. Let's start with uh, with goals. As silly as it sounds, how important do you think? Um, Actually, writing them down is obviously you got to put in the work. You got to do the action, right? Mm-hmm. You got to write them down and dream, dream all yeah. day. Yeah. But what does that mean to you? And then, you know, then I'll say something about how I feel. Well, writing them down is you know make it as tangible as possible. Uh, but more importantly, you have to uh, internalize them. And so, regardless of where you're at, you, you have to be able to see it written on paper. You're taking that with you. Mm-hmm. So it's got to be here. You know, you gotta, 
It's got to be in the heart. And specific as possible. Specific as possible. And, and, and it include a number in there, whatever, it, right? It, it, you know, it could be, for me, example, it could have been, you know, I wanted to win the county championship. I wanted to win the state championship. I wanted to win the national title. I wanted to be an All-American. I wanted to be an Olympian. So all those were, pro- there were progressions. And so they occurred at, you know, at junctures in my life where um, I achieved the, so those, those goals, checked it off, and then moved on for the next one. But it also told me that I had to point everything I did, my behavior, my habits in that direction, to, to move to, towards that goal. And so that meant tremendous sacrifices. It meant outworking opponents. It meant going to competitions that were going to test me and tell me where I was at, right. what I needed to do. and where, you know, So goals are, are, are tremendous. They're, they're important. You know, Yogi Berra once said, if you, if, you, if you don't have any goals, you'll end up somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you, know, you need to know where you're going. Right. So, uh, you you have to have those goals, uh, right. and otherwise you'll end up somewhere it's, else. It's, cra- it's crazy to me how people kind of refuse to write them down, but I think by simply writing them down, it does it immediately creates this tunnel vision, as opposed to kind of bleeding aimlessly. But you know, some things that happen. But let me set three random goals. I feel like like writing that down, not only just writing in existence, but I feel like everything else kind of begins to narrow in control. And I heard somewhere that you know. It's almost 70 70 percent of success showing up. It is also writing down those goals and what you and um, committing to it and committing to that. committing to it. And right. there's a lot of kids that you know I count on a daily basis that that don't have that concept down and, and are just well, they flounder and they they're you know they're going from day to day and they're working aimlessly just kind of going through life. And it's, right. uh, you know I always had something that I could aspire and shoot for and. Along the way, reaching that goal, I got the education and I, the, the and, and got the career, but it was the outcome of pursuing a goal. That's, inc- that's an incredible question, but what do you think that is? What is it that, you know, you've seen all these champion wrestlers, what is it that is that drive, that spark? Everyone says that, you know, struggle, failures, mm-hmm. the background, that's what makes people what they are. We see that common trait, and that's another question I listed, but... Um, obviously, a very tough question. What do you feel that you know? What if you haven't had a tragedy in your life? What if you have a golden spoon in your mouth and have everything it is? Um, is it wrong to say that that person can still have that incredible hunger and drive? They can. Where do you of feel course. that it comes from? Because you hear it all. How bad do you want I, I, all these motivational speeches? It, it, it's is it have you, have been this for almost thir- over thirty years. Is it genetic disposition? Is it <laughs> thirty-five years? I've I've encountered a range of, of people in the sport of wrestling, and it's probably the same in a lot of other sports, mm-hmm. where they, they come from a, a, an array of backgrounds that are that are just very diverse, income-wise, uh, ethnicity, I race, agree. I agree. different countries. I've traveled the world. Uh, I I've, I've seen wrestlers with, with that came from backgrounds with dirt floors and. Mm-hmm. And, and Joel Romero, we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Joel Romero is a great example. I mean, people from Cuba. I mean, you go to Cuba and there's a, you know, these, these guys are smuggling cigar, cigars to sell to you so they could, you know, put food on a table back home. You know, during competitions when they left the country, a lot of them would defect. Right. So they came from very tough circumstances, but they were great wrestlers. Right. And then you have some some uh, wrestlers that came from privilege and they did well as that's also. So I mean, it's really what you put in. You mm-hmm. get out what you put in. I was about to say, is it environment? But you just debunked that. Those are two completely different environments. So it's not that it's literally. Well, it's important to be in the right training environment. Yes. You know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. regardless of what home or what, what, where you came out of, what, what background, if you get in the right training environment. Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. And, and you know, Bill Rehai is a great example of that. Well, let's, uh, go, let's go into that. People are making straight documentaries. And I want to avoid that because I know people come in here asking you all the time. What do you, okay, I went to Quimby Oak, 10 straight league championships, <laughs> 10 straight league championships when it comes with the Lobos, shout out to Sam Spengler, uh, he, he has everything to do with that, but the only, well, we would finally go to counties, and everybody wanted their name on the banner of counties, I would say more than 50% of every weight class of county was South Valley wrestlers, mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm old. This is 2005 that I graduated right, high school. 2002, 2002, yes, 2002 you're 2001. Uh, but <laughs> but, uh, but and, and they're still a powerhouse. Is it the feeder middle schools, the South Valley? What do you attribute to it? Is it families. It's, 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 a, it's a community. First of all, it's a community. It's people like um, like Bertie Marr, uh, 
like Charlie Morales, the, some of the founders of the, of the Gilroy Hawks Club. Um, we had... Is that right there? Year-round. Year-round year round competition. Year-round program. Solid ones. Solid club programs. Kids starting at you know the age of five, four. By the time they hit high school, they already had 10 years of wrestling experience. So mm-hmm. many of them do. Um, we, have, we have three middle schools that all have wrestling programs. Uh, they all have cross-country programs. They have track programs. So their athletics is valued mm-hmm. uh, here in this community. And uh, so by the time they, a lot of the wrestlers get here, they're very, very seasoned veterans. And as ninth graders are positions to they're not, wait, they're not waiting the first few months before season to get in shape and actually drive exactly are you kidding me no way yeah and we have great coaching at this level coach Varela very dedicated uh, um, coach goes year-round travels the country taking his wrestlers and exposing them to the very highest levels of competition everywhere in the country uh, so Co- coach Varela has been great uh, coach Gonzalez Armando Gonzalez prior to him uh, and then coach Armando, Armando was around during my year yeah, that was the first time I saw him wrestle, and he was a little chub bub with like little, little boobies. And he pulls off. He's got this brand new spanking new Adidas singlet, blue with stripes. And I'm thinking, well, oh, it's a pretty sweet singlet. Let's see if he can stud. Yeah. And, and that's what made me fall in love with wrestling because I realized that it was truly, truly technique over yes. muscle. And I think that's what people understand. Well, it helps to have both. <laughs> yes. If you have that base, then you're unstoppable. It helps to have both. You're, you're unstoppable. But to see uh, a guy come in, football player, no technique, um, hulked, and then see him get worked by a guy who's simply intelligent, mm-hmm. right? Probably one of the most underrated things that people don't understand mm-hmm. about wrestlers because, they, they, of course, education is the key to change your perception. They assume, same thing like they did in martial arts, yeah. that it's, oh, it's barbaric, it's this, but... You gotta go back to ancient Greek times. It's one of the oldest sports uh, uh, alive. Period. And it is technique over muscle was what really. Well, it's one stop that running was the oldest sport, you know, marathon and all that. But then once they researched it further, they right. talked to some of the marathoners that were running. That makes sense. Completely. They, they found they found out they were running from wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, I was thinking, well, of course, running goes. They're running from saber, saber two tigers. <laughs> they're so they're running from uh, crazy wrestlers. So wrestling is the oldest sport. They right. created marathons. Right. Uh, uh, Great, great transition. I want to ask you because you've been there, done that. Um, number one, before we go into diet, what do you think about the, the whole weight cutting thing? And I'm not talking about mixed martial arts. I'm talking about in wrestling. Obviously, our knowledge has increased. I think back to seventh grade and someone told me that I had to chew gum and spit in a cup. Right? <laughs> yes. If you're a wrestler, you know what oh, I'm yeah. talking about. Oh, yeah. That's one yeah. way to know that I'm not yeah. fake, fake yeah. it. But really, you're dehydrating yourself. All the wrong things. Dehydration. What, what, what are your thoughts on that for anybody who's maybe being coached wrong, who's not thinking right? Because since I've learned, uh, I feel that there is other ways to cut correctly. There is. Science. Well, back then, back in the day, and then even, I think even in your day, probably maybe around the time you, you were wrestling, they, they, they had, you had to now certify your weight. So they mm-hmm. do hydration tests, they do your body mass. When you're inside the water, body mass uh, No, they, they do it differently. Mm-hmm. There's different ways now, technology-wise, you don't have to do it the water submersion, but mm. essentially they, you, you, they certify you as to what your lowest weight is that you can safely go. Versus before, back in our day, you did there was no certifications at all. You went whatever you could make, whatever you could get down to, the lowest you could get down to, which, uh, you know, again, it was uh, in many cases detrimental to, to athletes' health. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was one year where three athletes died at, at, the, current, damage. at, at the collegiate level that sparked the changes. So you had in, in the span of one year, three deaths, and the NCAA completely re- overhauled the, the weight management program. Right. And it's also been done at the high school level. So now those extreme cutting uh, practices uh, have been mitigated by the certification process, mm-hmm. which I think is a good thing. Right, right. So where do you draw the line with, with some of your guys? Oh, I can go to this weight class, 20 pounds, you're like, no, nah, no, nah, nah, nah. Well, first of all, they have to certify. So okay. if they, they, go, they go through the process, the hydration, the, the body mass index test. The, that will tell them you are no lower than this. You cannot go, and that's shared statewide. Right. You, and so you can't cheat and go to a different tournament. Right. And they, it's, it's shared on the web. So essentially, when they, part of the weight process is seeing uh-huh. where you, set, kept, you certified at. And that is the way you can go. So, you, so other you people will hold them accountable exactly. if, they, if the, the coach undermines that. Which yes. Is smart. I like yes. that. And if you do wrestle outside your weight or below weight, then you, there'll be sanctions. So. Yeah, you'll get called out yep. for it. 
Is at the high school level, and is this the type of stuff you do to talk about at CIF? This is the high school. This is CIF uh, policy. It's also National High School uh, Federation right. policy, and then at the NCAA. Well. Okay, wonderful. Uh, what's your term like at CIF? We mentioned earlier. I'm not sure if we mentioned it. To hear that you're serving on the CIF uh, the executive board, committee. The executive committee. So essentially, like I'm, I'm on the marketing board, and so we oversee most marketing advertising mm-hmm. budgets local in the area. Your guys' job is usually vote on decisions like the yes. one you just mentioned? Yes. Okay. And yes, that would be something that would be that would go through the executive committee. Okay. Exactly. And, uh, and aside from that, um, uh, but does budget play a role? Budget also, uh, the uh, the direction of the Central the, the California Interscholastic Federation in terms of uh, you know, the season of sports, how, long, mm-hmm. how many competitions could athletes participate in for wrestling, for example, is affording that. Yeah, rules, those kind, those dispute, kind of disputes as well. Th- those kind of rules. Uh, there's litigation at times that we have mm-hmm. to deal with, and, and uh, uh, Senator just on. cheated. Called Doctor Sanchez. No, he doesn't, <laughs> want, he doesn't want to deal with that. <laughs> so yeah, it, and it's but not those just type of things that happen. Yeah, and it's not just they work their way it's up. It's not just wrestling. It's you know all sports, all mm-hmm. see all three seasons: winter, you know, fall, winter, spring. So there's uh, eligibility issues. There's you know, athletic motivation. The uh, students moving from one part of the of of the state to another, or from one school to another, all that is look, it's nutritional education. The nutritional education yeah, also yeah. is uh, it's huge. You know, you want to get the edge when you're out on the mat, or when you're you're cycling, or biking, or, or mm-hmm. running, or whatever. The diet mm-hmm. is, could be the edge. That could be the difference maker. Perfect, perfect, perfect timing running. is going through my head. So we got past weight cutting. Last thing, I'm trying to think of value for those pe- people. Um, I know what I got. To do. <laughs> but uh, di- diet, in your opinion, it's easy for me to talk. But when somebody who's been there, done that, what would you uh, attribute? Give, give them two secrets, man. Give them banana, bananas. What? It, well, just pro, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're you're, if, especially in sport wrestling, very physically grueling. And you can't expect, you know, a, a race car Ferrari to run on sand, you know, oh, sure. and or rocks or so. What you put in your tank is very important. So, you know, high protein, uh, you know, and carbs, of course, are important for your fuel. Um, Hydration is important as well. Uh, the, the better you eat and the better you treat your body, the harder you will train and right. push yourself. And you right. can't push yourself on an empty tank. I feel hydration gave me a competitive edge if you do the discipline to do it and, and the night before, right? Not the day of. And when you, when you have two guys that are 100% equally matched, they say it becomes a battle of nutrition. Yeah, what's in the tank? Right? What's in your tank? What's in your gas tank? What yeah. kind of fuel do you have? And, and now we've really seen the emergence of, of good fats. You kind of heard that thing. Yeah. Want to get your thought on? Because yeah. come on, you're 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 stud with the same. It's good fats. The you know? same same breed. But but what people essentially what what I'm learning is carbs, essentially grains and breads. But if you're able to replace those, because there's some gluten, you know, things and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And actually, just simply take the bread, replace it with fats, but everything else is good protein, mm-hmm. obviously vegetables. Would you, and then eventually, I think it was ketogenic, ketogenic diet, mm-hmm. but eventually your body starts to burn all those fats. Now, what fats are we talking about? Good fats, like avocado, coconut oil, no, it's those exactly. types of things. Yeah. Um, if you're not, you know, if you're not allergic to peanuts, I guess. Right, a right. Source yeah. of protein. You have walnuts, macadamia nuts. Is that something you probably recommend? It depends on what you're training for. Yeah, you right. gotta eat a balanced diet. You right. gotta have a balanced diet. You gotta feel good. The main thing yes. is you're eating to feel good, and if, if what you eat makes you feel good, mm-hmm. you're able to train at a high level. Mm-hmm. Then you're probably eating the right things. Right. But what you don't want to see is someone that's living on Red Bull, monster drinks, you know, those high energy drinks, and chasing it with uh, M and M's and Skittles. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> exactly, and getting all amped up. I mean, that's not the kind essentially of essentially because. Inflammation or sugar attacks inflammation, right? That's the biggest thing we see. So you get that little twist in the knee, uh, sh- and you got skills in the system. Yep. So to run to it, uh, and it doesn't do anything for your muscle development. You know, your, right. your, your muscles are you know they, they thrive on protein, right? And, and so you got to feed your muscles as well. They do a lot of the heavy lifting. All right, champ. Daily schedule. I don't want to say during the, the shepherd days, but I don't. I don't want to <laughs> say during Arizona State either, because you're kind of disciplined by then. Already, how about independence? How about independence? School is obviously a major factor. Okay, I'm changing my mind. After Arizona State, in that security guard phase, but yet you still want to go to the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Uh, aside from work, uh, 
or you can throw that in there. What was your daily regimen? You wake well, up. You, you mentioned Shepherd Middle School, and yes. I live, I live a couple miles away from Shepherd Middle School, so I would run to school. You know, while kids were taking a bus, I was running to school. I was by the time school started, I already had you know put in about an hour of workout. Independence was the same thing. Independence is a huge school. It's huge. It's, it's two. Huge. It's two miles around. I mean, if you include Overfill Gardens, mm -hmm. it's two miles. So I would run that for time every morning. And then there was Suncrest Mountain that was two miles away from the school just to get to the base of the mountain. And then you ran Suncrest. I mean, Suncrest is like this. It, it, you know, the grade is, is enormous. So I would run that for time and then Hill's back. Yeah. So that was just to start the day. I mean, that was before anybody even got to school. And so then, you know, you get to school, then after work, lift that lunch. Just and then, then there was practice. Really? Then I would go to the two hour practice and do whatever everybody else did. And then stay after and work a little more. So that was just at the minimum, just to, you know, to, to be a state champion, I had to do that. To be a national champion in high school, I had to do that. And when I got to the, of course, the Olympic level, it was really just fine tuning Everything. technique, yeah, yeah. competing against the best, and then, uh, you know, think, you know, to make be an Olympian, you're, you're, everybody's fighting for that. So you're you're sorry going guys. against several countries. No secret, hard work. That's hard work. No secret to it. Everybody wants a shortcut, right? Everybody wants the magic pill, but at the end of the day, the only magic pill is consistency. That's hard work. That's, 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 uh, the and this generation of kids needs to know that. Because yes. a lot of things are handed to our, to our, right. to our kids. The technology makes a lot of things accessible. Yeah. But how, do you feel, how do you feel about the 8th place trophy? The eight. You've, heard, you've heard the concept of oh. um, some people are against giving a ribbon, giving a whatever yeah. for everybody. Because no, you, you didn't get first, you didn't get second. That it actually I think it's it, participation. You know, okay. Acknowledging participation is fine. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, at, at, I didn't medal at the Olympics, but I got a I got a, a participation token kind of that. So hey, I was Olympian. You know, so right. that, I I I'm fine with that. But um, you know, at, the thing about sports, people sort is the results sort things out themselves. You know, right. so when you're running or you're you're competing in the sport of wrestling. Everybody knows. You know where you're at. The first. times tell you where right. you're at. Your height right. tells you what, what you've done. You know, your pole vaulting, which I also did. I ran cross country. You know, I ran. I was a three sport uh, athlete also, right. so I trained year round. Right. And so cross country was a, a tough sport. Yeah. Because yeah. here's this three wrestler, and I'm running, and these skinny guys are just flying by me, and I'm just, you know, but what it did is it kept me in shape. I ran mm -hmm. in distances and courses that I, I would never have even imagined. But, you know, cross-country coach pushing me, uh, running all in Rock Park. I mean, that was just, Oof. it was just. I did it on seventh grade. Cardiac Hill. I mean, I that thing gave, was straight I, I, up. I gave up after that meet yeah. in seventh grade. I'll be, I'll be mad up and admit it. It was that Ellen Rock Park ride. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, obviously my body and mindset was completely different as I approached uh, high school. But, um, and you go up against guys that are running, at, you know, in the 15s on a, on a three-mile course, and I'm, I'd be happy to break 20, you right. know, 20 minutes. So, right. and then pole ball things, you know, so the, so the sports, the, the nature of sports is so competitive that you know where you stand. I right. mean, the times don't cheat. The distance don't cheat. Right. You're, you're placing on the podium as a cheat. It just, you know, it's, whether you get hardware or not makes no difference. No, in that, no. In that way. Um, amazing. You and I can talk about, man, wrestling, martial arts all day, but I want to keep getting back to, to leadership. Uh, and so after University of Phoenix, right, we have the Navy, and then it was North, I can't see it in my head, North, North Central University. North Central, North Central, yeah. but where you got your PhD, and you chose organizational leadership. Yes. Why? Well, because when you're leading, leading an organization, there's a lot of moving parts to it, a lot of pieces. Uh, there's people in the organization. There's uh, the mission and uh, vision of the organization, which you help create. Uh, there, in high school, for example, there's... there's so many moving parts. District level, there's site level leadership, there's the teachers you work with, there's the students, of course, there's the parent piece, uh, there's the community piece, and there's the, the cultural piece of high school. You have your visual performing arts, you have your uh, athletics, you have your career tech education. At Gilroy High, we have a, a dual immersion program, with just a few in the state at the high school level. We have our, a biomedical science academy. Um, and, so there, and there needs to be a blueprint. There needs to be, Can be um, chaos, organized chaos. Well, <laughs> some, some days it feels like that. It does, yeah. uh, but overall, you know, the school runs well because we have good people in positions and key positions that help it move along. And so, you know, my, my assistant principals are, are amazing. My 
department chairs are amazing. Uh, this district level leadership has been so tremendously supportive. We're right. going to get anything done without them. Right. So it's, the school board is, is also great here. I mean, I've heard, I've been in school districts where school boards are just dysfunctional and crazy and, and fighting. Here is not the case. We have a right. great superintendent, great district leadership, great site level leadership. I have great fellow principals that I work with as well. Great middle school feeders that, that, that I work very closely with their principals as well. There are two others besides South Valley now. Right? Yeah, Solorzano okay. and Brownell Middle School and South okay. Valley Middle School. Okay. Well, you got that, you know, we have one indoor place to shoot hoops at. And <laughs> my, my nephew lives here. You know, mm -hmm. Jess, and he keeps asking me over and over. And I'm like, well, hold on. So I start Googling and Googling with him. Uh, one of the old uh, gyms in Gilroy used to have one, but now the closest thing is Morgan Hill 20 Fire Super yep. believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So what I keep telling him is, stop shooting outside, man. You need to get inside. You need to get in the environment. You need to go where? He's like, no, there isn't one. I'm like, don't you make excuses to me. <laughs> Let me look it up. And I go, oh, yeah, there isn't. There yep. it isn't uh, one. But obviously, Gilroy High has got open gym going on once in a while. Yeah, open gym. And then there's also the basketball course out by the tennis court. Oh, uh, the middle school within... Uh, the Ness, uh, so yeah, that's where they're doing most of it. Yeah, summer they're leagues, gyms, they're, they're um, multi purpose room, and gym. Yep, and so like that. Uh, but again, I'm going in JBAU, I mean, just year round okay. competition in all sports, including Great. wrestling is one of them, you know, basketball. Great. Uh, we host the AAU and NJB uh, level events here all the time. Uh, the coach who played at San Clara University did he retire, he said he was approaching retirement, or is he still coaching? Coach, well, Coach Og, Bud Ogden, who is was a Santa Clara alumni and. I remember the Hall of Fame with Sackler and NBA wow. player drafted number one uh, in 1969. I didn't think he was an NBA player. And, uh, he he, he uh, said nice to me a dunk contest. <laughs> we did a dunk contest with Subway Drive Through. We'll be doing that uh, again. I hope another, so. To yeah, get one in. Another thing. But, but he retired. Continue on. Yeah, he retired. Yeah, he was he was a stud. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, he was a special ed teacher here for years. Um, if you don't mind me asking, so you're in charge of organizational leadership. Um, so how does it work educating me? Do you kind of have the say on, you know, you're, te you're trying to become a teacher at Gilroy High School, uh, they, they got to get past this desk first, or how does that process? We work totally with human resources. And educated, uh, first of all, you got to recruit the teachers. you gotta got to If there's an opening, we post an opening, and then we, we hopefully get a, a, a lot of interest in the, in the uh, position. And then we screen. We, HR helps screen, human resource screens them, make sure that they're qualified, they have the right credentialing experience. And then from the screening process, we'll get, you know, three or four, Candidates, and then we interview them. Right. If we have one or two positions that are open, we'll offer if they're, they're good. We'll offer to the, the top candidate or second person, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then they go through a whole process after that. Once they, if they accept the positions, you know, fingerprinting, background clearance, mm -hmm. uh, contract, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we work closely with human resources to accomplish that. But you know, it's it's uh, we're in the South Valley, South County, we're the furthest city south of the Santa Clara County, which mm -hmm. runs all the way up, of course, to. You know, Palo Alto. Right. Uh, so we, it's, com it's competitive. Mm -hmm. And we are not the highest paying district, mm -hmm. uh, but we're in a more affordable part of, of the county. So that, we have that going for us. And So don't, don't lie to me. As a leader, the toughest part of your job, uh, you got to fire people. At times, yes. At times, right. there are times we, we, the teachers are, aren't a good fit, and we right. have to uh, make the decision to. It's a necessary evil. It's a necessary evil. And, and Iron sharpens iron, and at the end of the day, the big picture is it's for the kids. It is. Have, uh, but the overwhelming majority of, of teachers in, you can in avoid that by recruiting well in the first are place. Great. Are yes. great. Are great. Yes. yes. And uh, yeah, I, won't, I won't put you on the spot there on how do you deal with that because it's pretty black and white. I've had to do it myself. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to have those crucial conversations. you got to have those tough conversations. Let's talk about the, the kids for, uh, for a second. Obviously, the kids uh, are great. Um, at Gilroy High School, um, we do have counselors, right? We have great, we have a great uh, student services uh, department here that supports our students, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a great parent club. Also, it's amazing; uh, they uh, help with a lot of functions here on campus as well. Right. Our teaching staff is, is great. Our some of the department chairs are leaders of each in each subject area, uh, so we have great department chairs and two great assistant principals. Yeah, so I'm trying to remember, to run who educated school? me on the uh, CSU, UC standards that would be your counselor. In the process? Yeah, and, and uh, I remember my, my counselor did, um, is it obviously mandatory, they got to come through there, they got to, um, or is it kind of more on them? It's a tough thing because the counselors aren't going to chase it down. 
they will in some cases they do. You know, they, there's <laughs> kids that are real close. They'll take them later. Like yeah, they, you know, they t- need to retake a class or they need to, you know, they need to uh, take Make a sure higher level math. The right classes. Exactly. So their four-year plan is important. And, and our uh, graduation requirements have shifted uh, to the Cal- CSU uh, A through G requirements. So we went from requiring just two years of math and two years of science to now three years of math and three years of science course the world language uh, requirement as well so we're lined up with the college acceptance uh, standards okay. uh, so we really ramped up the rigor and expectations for our students in the community service as well 80 hours mm-hmm. students are expected to complete 80 hours if they're here for four years so that's another requirement that's changed in the last few years and just for the moms that are watching uh, graduation rate Oh yeah, so above ninety, above ninety percent. Uh, we uh, have we were recognized uh, for our, two of our signature programs, the dual immersion program, the right. California Golden Bell Award for that, and then the Hoffman Award, which is kind of like the Oscar, the Academy Awards for Absolutely. academic programs yeah. for Santa Clara County. Just last year for our biomedical science academy, we have a waiting list for both programs. Wow. Uh, we take students from out, inside the district and outside the district, right. and it's first thing at the same. There's an ROTC se- segment here. Is it, I, what, what branch? I, I wish there was an ROTC. Okay. That, if, I, if I could wave my magic wand funding, and funding add is, one more program, funding stuff. the ROTC would be it. Yes, yeah. Because I think that's what's holding Mount Pleasant together because they do a great job. they got kind of a Marine base going. Nice. Silver Creek's got their, their Navy thing. But yep. those same gentlemen that I went back and saw Zoe uh, Lofgren, uh, Congresswoman, mm-hmm. and saw our same Master Sergeant, same thing, and such a small you, percentage. Also? I was yeah. nice. Just kind of during that transition mm-hmm. year of uh, my freshman year. I was at Mount Pleasant, and then Evergreen got built, and you know, sure. they, yep. they did have yep. portables. They still yep. pretty have portables. Yep. Um, so that played a huge factor uh, on me as well. And I feel that's, that's so important. But hey, it's not out of the question. If anybody's watching out there, the donate to go to high school. I, I actually love, make a real difference. Uh, like that's program. Here. Yeah, that, that's one way to do it right there. But, um, we're going to keep talking in three hours and fly by. Let me see if there's anything important. I know this is the one place Dr. Sanchez didn't want to be as often as vacation time. <laughs> and, I, and I dragged him in here, but I'm really grateful. And thank you no sir, for doing that. No you're, problem. You're, you're the man. Um, advice fresh out of ASU for others. Um, rolled out of bed, snuck out of bed last night and was kind of, everyone talks about direction, passion, that if you do what you love, right, then the, the fire, the passion will come. The money will come, but if you just chase money, but you absolutely hate the job, you know, and people have certain situations where they have to be realistic. They got to feed kids and so forth. Another really tough question I'm throwing at you today: What would I will do this phase where I'm reading all these self-help books, these sure. motivational books, yep. these law of attraction, which I'm I'm actually huge on visualization and those types of things. For that kid out there who, you know, the Mustang just graduated, trying to decide between gavelin or you know. Wants to go to school, and I've heard this many times. But mom and dad, and money, and I got to work it. What would be your advice to them aside from patients, which they all? We we encounter that all all the time. I mean, for example, this last class of 2017 just graduated. uh, You know, we had several of them go on to a four year, several, and we had several that even more go on to a two year. We had some go to uh, vocational ed schools. We had some go to the military. Our mission statement states that we have four years to prepare you for four university, a two university, vocational ed, or the military, or the workforce. They're all viable uh, options, and we want to make sure that when they leave our school, they have the skills, that, literacy-wise, to, mm-hmm. to be able to fill out an application, you know, talk and articulate what, what they want and what to accomplish it on a job, uh, or you know, vocational ed is a great route as well. You know, we need skilled labor. In the, in the workforce immediately. And, and we have a huge career tech education program here as well. So we have culinary arts, we have auto shop, we have wood shop, we have small engines, we have veterinary science, we have um, we have programs on this campus that have been decimated in other uh, school districts. Right. It, there was such a focus on just going to college. And the reality is some of our students are not going to go directly of them are inclined to use their skills uh, in 
the vocational ed. And how do you find out, how do you find out what those are? You got to try. You got to dabble. Uh, and sometimes we get into analysis paralysis. Well, we'll spend so much time analyzing a situation instead of just pulling the trigger, you gotta jumping ask. in. You got to ask, mm -hmm. and um, sometimes you'll figure out things along the way. And if it ended up not being the thing, but you met one person there who led you to the other mm -hmm. thing, uh, it would have never happened if you wouldn't have exactly. went for that There's thing. planning and studying and, and that goes into ball, but there's also action. Yes. You know, so the PSA, the planning and studying, and there's also got to pull trigger and, right. and put it into action. And, and that's where the planning goes, in, goes into an organization like a high school. Mm -hmm. And of course, it, we're not just a 9-12 school district. We're a... A12 school district, so we have the benefit of having leadership overseeing all all 12 grades versus, you know, say San Jose, for example, Eastside Union High School District is a high school district, and there are several uh, elementary districts that feed into it. Right. So that is, I think, could, it can be a lot more complicated than having your K-12, like San Jose Unified, for example, another right. K-12 unified right. school, uh, Morgan Hill. K-12 unified, so you're not dealing with feeder districts. The, the, the vision uh, of, the, of, the dis, of this district and the system is all under one roof. Right. And that's very helpful for right. us moving forward and making Gilbert High the school it is today. Right. right. Uh, we think about private schools. Pros, cons, that kid is, you know, a private school sets them up for better. I have my own theories, mm -hmm. of course, because I'm wacky like that. <laughs> Sister went to Mount Pleasant, she's an right. MD. Right. So can you say that uh, environment definitely helps, but essentially it's on the person regardless of where they go, because I think you also got to be a, a chameleon. Depending on what you do, if you're a NASA rocket scientist, you don't got to talk to anybody, right? right? But And I think it's so important to have diversity, not just diversity of, of race, but diversity of gender, right? You sent somebody to an all-girls mm -hmm. school, yeah. all high school. And these are just personal opinions. None of these are facts. Yeah, right. What, no, it, it, what are your thoughts of, of, of you know, a public school education versus private? Well, well the reality is, uh, we, I mean, we, it's competitive now. There's a lot more options for students now than existed back in back in my day, certainly. West Catholic, man, has taken Shibuya, Quimby, yep. all our athletes. Nobody yep. goes ever. It's, it's competitive. Right. So you have charter schools. You yeah. have your private schools. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have schools with a special niche, a uh, you know, special uh, program they offer. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a lot of options for our students. I think it's a matter of fit. And I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that public school is the only way to go. There's no one size fits all. But there's solution. it has to fit the family. It has to right. fit the student, and it has to work for for everyone. And right. so finding out what fits is is uh, important. And I, you know Gilroy meets a, Gilroy High School meets a lot of needs. Right. Uh, we have a lot of programs here, a lot of opportunities for students. Mm -hmm. uh, I always tell students there's something here for everyone. And right. so you got to just find your way. And of course. Regardless of where you go, you're going to have to deal with the whole teen issues Great and point. the relational Great issues Great and point. social issues. That's not going to change. That's not going to change. It's what are your needs? Exactly. What do you have wants? Exactly. And if Gilroy has the best, for example, robotics program and, you know, you can afford private school, but you want to go to Gilroy because of their robotics or their wrestling program and so forth. So, Well, our, our, our valedictorian just graduated. I remember uh, he had an option to go to any school. He wanted to. Uh, he was a high caliber kid. Mm -hmm. Could have went, went to Bellman, like mm -hmm. his father did. He could have went to, you know, any school. Wanted mm -hmm. Christian. He was shopping around. He did. He did his homework and he visited here. And he says, "I want to come here." Right. And he ended up graduating. He's going to be at Columbia University. Wow. But you know, we have. Uh, I always say, hey, if you want to, if you want to consider Gilroy High, and it's like it's like when I've talked with the realtors and the tours. Families that have their apprehensions about Gilroy High for whatever reason, because mm -hmm. of the, the past, have them come down and visit. Yes. I will give you a private tour. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a, 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 a PR level that, letter that I sent them that ha highlights all the Go not until you try it. You exactly. See it. Just yeah. come and see. And I've, done, I've extended the invitation. As a result, I've had families here that they said, hey, I want to send my, my student here. And they are, have done very well. Mm -hmm. So I'm very proud of that. Uh, two more things, and we'll, we'll wrap up. Um, your advice to kids on criticism and the opinions of others. And I know it sounds, they hear it enough on Facebook and YouTube that just be this, do this, but again, acting on it. Um, I don't want to say, uh, you know, kids these days are too sensitive. Mm -hmm. We're all self-conscious. We're all a little sensitive. Words do hurt. Sure. But 
what would be your advice on resilience, especially if there's something you want to do? Because oftentimes, even the ones that we love, you know, the voices from our moms, dads, etc., what we're doing, uh, or just criticism in general, what, what would be your advice to them? Uh, that's a crazy well, I would say that. this, and I always keep going because back in the day, because you know, in the '80s we didn't have social media, we didn't right. have the 24/7 cycle mm-hmm. of exposure. And so, what I would add, what I would uh, encourage this generation to do is to just be mindful of how much time you spend on social media um, and exposing yourself to other people's views and opinions. Mm-hmm. First of all, you got to know who you are. You got to know what you're about and self, those values, self-worth, self-worth. those values that you have that you, you know your parents are instilling with you. They're affirming in you. Be true to yourself. And you're going to go through life, and life is tough. You know, there's going to be some people that aren't going to be your fan, and, and you're not going to, you know, they're not, you're not going to connect with them. Don't take it personally. You'll you never, know, don't internalize never it. Gonna please don't internalize everybody, everybody, everybody's opinion about you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, take the good uh, and filter out the bad and stay focused on your, on your goals and, and your uh, destiny in life. That's what Aristotle it. said it best. The only way to avoid criticism is be nothing, do nothing, say nothing. nothing. Hence, there is no way to exactly. avoid criticism. Exactly. People are always going to exactly. have their, their uh, uh, opinions, but no, really, really well said. Um, as athletes, we're always taught to focus on their weaknesses. Roman, your left hand layup sucks. Mm-hmm. Work on your left hand <laughs> layup, yep. and that that was my theory. I think that made me a better person mm-hmm. throughout my whole life. Just these past, you know, three years, I've been hearing from a career perspective, back to self awareness that. You know you're going to suck at taxes or whatever, hire an accountant. Mm-hmm. There's this theory of, yeah, be aware of your weaknesses, but how about we say forget about focusing so much time on your weaknesses and let's recognize your strengths mm-hmm. and double down yep. on your strengths. What are your what are your thoughts to those two schools of thoughts? Uh, do you think what I said second is obviously better for career? You don't want to do that in athletics, right? I, I think there's, there's people expose your weaknesses. Uh, uh, what I've learned in life I've lived long enough is there's no single one answer to how to approach life. You have to make the best out of the situation you're in. Experiment, try. And, uh, and you know, push. I always try to push myself professionally. I always try to expose myself to new ideas. I like to interact with teachers and educators and principals and from other districts and other schools. Um, and have an open mind. Too. Open mind, and, and then listening to the you know the parents and finding out what they're, what's important to them and to what's important to the to the students. You know, I agree. It, it, it's it, almost poison to think that one way is the way. In that right. way. Especially even when it comes to when you reach your level and ran two miles, you have to find a way to shock your muscles in a different mm-hmm. way, right? Which if that ends up meaning using TRX, whatever that's yeah. called, just because you've never felt it before, right. going to Bikram yoga and being open to that because mm-hmm. you're so darn bulky, right? Yep. And opening up yep. Your, yep. your shoulders and, and that really... Uh, yeah, and it, you know, if you listen to the whispers, you won't have to hear the screams, as I said. So right. there's always the undercurrent of, you know, what's going on in the community, what's going on in the school community. So that's why I try to get out and interact with the students. I try to make it visible, accessible as much as possible. I don't live in my office. Um, and just getting out there with the kids, getting in the classrooms. And listen to the whispers. Yeah, and, and, and putting your, keeping your ear to the ground and, and being in touch with the students that you're charged with serving and, and providing the very best uh, environment for them. So that's what I try to do day in and day out. Yeah. Some days are easier than others. Right. I think that's another thing that athletics comes from is it kind of builds that self-confidence, not towards others, but as far as self-awareness, because wrestling, I think personally, at the end of the day, it's you versus yourself, right? You hear that a lot, and then the more you're fighting yourself, 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 uh, what happens later is then you can completely help others, because you fought yourself so much, right, in that constant mental battle. I I think this is an amazing talk. Let me see if there's any uh, thing, and and I know we got a little deep and emo on you, but uh, at the end of the day, it's all about value, and I think talked about things that a lot of people would be like, damn, you know, he's absolutely right. Mm-hmm. And Dr. Sanchez being the role model that he is, that anybody who wants to achieve that, you, you got to do that. I always say, I don't care if you want to be the best yarn knitter in the world. Find out who the best yarn knitter is, who is number one, and go talk to them. And if you can't go talk to them, find out what they're doing and try to mimic them in some way. It's not copying, but you make it your own and you do it better. But guess what? They might, they must be doing something right. Yeah, and, right? and, and, and that's you, the that's the best way to leapfrog and to where you want to be. Those life lessons that you know the, the Chinese say, if you know, want to know what's down the road, ask those coming back. Right. And so you know, people that are 
further along in their career, further along in life, that are older than you, that have experience, and maybe in a, a career that you're interested in, you know, they learn some lessons. They're, de- they're further down the road than you are. That was brilliant. And they've come you back. You just dropped two do- deep quotes. <laughs> I wish I would have turned this out of you. They're coming uh, back, but you got to listen. you got to listen to what you got. You've got to be willing to listen and, and the life lessons that they learn. That, that, so you won't have to repeat those mistakes. Listen to those mistakes. Download it. Get it in your memory. And then, hey, ask for advice. You right. know, a lot of kids don't want to do that. They just want to just, you know, they're on their own. They think they can just do it on their own. And they find out they crash and burn. Had they talked to someone that's been down that road and has come back and has life lessons from it, you don't have to experience that. You be further along with so that. much energy. Exactly. That reminds me of Steve Jobs' quote that, uh, you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots looking mm-hmm. backwards. Mm-hmm. And I feel that's uh, so key in whatever endeavor uh, you're doing. And it really, it really shortcuts the process. You want to be an MD, go talk to an MD or somebody. Okay, they're going to right away say, well, whatever you do, don't do this. That's mm-hmm. where I screwed up. And right there, you're wearing, you just saved your parents 20000 Yeah, right? down, exactly. that, down that road. Exactly. And that's why it's it's so important. Changing majors four or five times in college, you know, your parents are paying for it. I mean, it's a lot easier to do that because your parents are paying for it. Yes. You, know, you just get the right counsel at a time. You interact with people that are in a profession already that you want to be in. It can give you a better sense of what that career is like. So those apprenticeships are really important. Holy, without reading job shadowing, without reading any of this, we, we just about hit everything um, that I wanted it, except for uh, I think we kind of did this. The freshman kid is going to be okay. We did that right hook. Ooh, okay, the last one in case he's watching. Uh, this is just for, for fun. Who's a one wrestler <laughs> grow, grow, growing up? And you saw this. Uh-huh. That um, and it's funny because that guy who was a pain in the ass, who mm-hmm. pushed us the most, who did that. Mm-hmm. It's funny how five years later, four years later, even though he was your rival, you end up respecting each other mm-hmm. more than anything. <laughs> or, or not, unless no, you're a complete no, no, no. douche. I have, I have, I have, a, few, I have a few people. Who, who, first, who would be your one? Give them. First of all, I want to thank. Give them the, the credit. I, I want to thank the, the, my teammates that in the room, in the, in the, whether it was at Shepherd, Independence, or Arizona State, for pushing me. I mean, I could not have got achieved the things at the level I have without having some tremendous workout problems. So I want to give a shout out to all of them. Uh, they're awesome. But, but uh, there were some wrestlers that you just that I. Uh, had a lot of respect for it, even now. We just uh, kept running into each other. They were just tough. Uh, Tom Brands was a, a, a Olympic champion in '96. Same year, I was a, he was a freestyle Olympic champion. I was in Greco Roman mm-hmm. uh, wrestling. So there's two styles of wrestling in, in, in the Olympics. One is named after you, by the way. So it's Greco Roman. Greco Roman. Yeah. So, uh, but Tom Brands was an Olympic champion. You're smiling in his face. Three, like, oh, three time, fuck, three, three time you, NCAA man. champion. He was a monster. I never beat him. I, I was okay. 0 and 5 against him. The, the closest I ever came to beating him. Uh, the closest I ever came was. With seven or eight points, right. and he, he was that he was that tough. Right, uh, he was he was a monster. Uh, right. He's a current coach of Iowa University of Iowa, I mean, so he's okay. he's he's uh, he's solid. Uh, Kerry Colat was a world medalist a few times. He he was a, he was a monster. Uh, Alan Freed, another stud out of Oklahoma State, and then Kendall Cross was an Olympic champion for Oklahoma State. Uh, I wrestled him seven times. Never fun. Zero oh, and seven against <laughs> one zero one time. Right. Came really close, but he was, you know, he's Olympic champion, also in '96. So the, the guys that I've wrestled against that, have, that I never, that was never quite able to beat, right. they, they either won world or Olympic championships, and, right. and uh, two of them in the same Olympics. Right. I were that's in freestyle. Life, that's life people. Imagine if you had them in the wrestling room. Oh, how much that would have. Yeah, helped. and that's yeah. what that's what yeah. people have to have to understand that when you get your bubble by Kendall Cross constantly. Then all of a sudden, you go and you wrestle Joe Schmo. You're wiping the floor with him. But it's yeah. really like that weight vest type thing that sure. if you're, and it comes to basketball, it comes to everything. If you're beating everyone on the court where you're at, and I tell all the kids who ask me this, you got you got to go play somewhere else. Yeah. You got And it's nothing against them. It's nothing against that, but you have to test your waters. And that's what Fernandez said because I thought, you know, my ego's through the roof. I thought I was the man. So he goes, I want you to go to West Valley College. Yeah. And I want you to play in the summers. Yep. You, you have to be invited, but uh, I'm going to make sure. And you can only run with the five. I walk in, and the Lopez twins are there from Stan- Stanford. <laughs> um, all these guys from San Jose State. The level of play is just... And that humbled me real exactly. quick. But what it really did is I got my butt whipped. Uh, that it really catapulted me as well. It let me know, testing the waters is what he meant. Uh, this is where I got to be 
to be on the loving yeah. plane. And most kids, they don't even sit, say that. So 50% of it is, yeah, participating, but, but we have to be honest. 50% of it is networking, who you know, those type of things, which is why, you know, Gilroy High School, if this wrestling school you love would really um, to help you out because they're going to surround you by that strength of schedule and around those things. Yep. If, if, if you want to be at the levels that you say you do, you know, um, but what an honor, what a pleasure. I always, I always came here to hang out with you for 10, 20 minutes, but never did we have this, you know, this type of talk. So I want to say a huge thank you to Dr. Marco Sanchez. He's recently inducting the California Wrestling Hall of Fame with Daniel Cormier, who's got a fight coming up at 2 o'clock with John <laughs> who lives, Jones. Who lives down the street. Who lives down the street in Gilroy. So, but just to, just to show you, was also an amazing decorated wrestler. You, you, most of you guys know that uh, already, but... These are the type of things that, that we just, I just wanted to have a hard-to-hard conversation with Dr. Marcus Sanchez. I hope it brought you guys value. And also, if you're thinking about moving to Gilroy, uh, what better personal insight than being the principal to know what to expect, who's going to put your kid in a headlock if, uh, <laughs> if he, go, he goes wrong or something wrong. But I just want to say uh, thank you again, sir. And uh, I'm in debt. Thank you no so problem. much for the It's an honor. Privilege and a pleasure. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Cheers. Sweet.